all five of you out there are watching us for later. Uh, we're going to get started. Uh, so just uh, Alex, I was providing a, an overview. Uh, community innovators is one of the, we've discovered that we have a lot of alums that are interested in this concept of innovation and social entrepreneurship. Great. And so what we're looking at what this public allies, what's the angle out about it? So in one hand, how do you fuse the values of public allies leadership practice with these emerging uh, sort of trends that is happening around social entrepreneurship and innovation? Okay. And there's three ways I think we're going we're gonna to look at this. I think what happens is you can find people that want to be intrapreneurs. These are people that want to lead innovation in their organizations. And then there are entrepreneurs. These are people who might create a new enterprise, be it nonprofit or uh, a business model. And then there's this new thing called infrapreneurs. These are people that are interested in looking at the ecosystem and looking at how uh, systems relate to each other. And they want to find ways to, to make the tectonic plates shift better with each other. Mm -hmm. And so we recognize that we have alum that might fit into one, two, or all three of those identities. And so how do we create a space to support these alum, uh, like Kamala said, to get to know each other, what they're doing, and get to see you're not alone, as well as how can Public Allies National Office uh, leverage resources to support this. So thanks to the generous support of the American Express Foundation, uh, they, they started supporting us last year, and we ran a first uh, round of boot camps uh, for, uh, for folks that were interested in creating a social enterprise and partner with Equine Green. Uh, we had 30 folks go through that experience last year. We're going to do it again this year. So that's going to come a little bit later uh, this summer. We'll talk about that in a bit. And, and what we're also starting is a series of Google Hangs. We're going to feature our alums who are doing this work. So that's what today is about. Is this, we're, we're bringing people together to get, start getting people excited. And, and we've also set up at Google Plus a page to start bringing you all together to start meeting each other, to start sharing. We started sharing some articles and links. Um, and so that's, that's where we are today. And so for the next 30 to 40 minutes, uh, we're going to introduce you to one of our alums, who I heart uh, very well, too, is Alex Tran. Uh, to give you just a quick background on Alex, he not only did Public Allies, but he's also a Coro Fellowship alum as well. So this guy loves structured learning environments. Um, and now he's doing this now for Code for America. Uh, Code for America uh, is all about trying to hack government for good or, or how to leverage uh, you know, technology to, to make government work responsibly, as well as to build uh, community uh, activity and civic participation. So Alex is leading the uh, Alex is leading uh, the Civic Startup Incubator, where they actually support governments. Uh, sorry, uh, support new emerging enterprises uh, to, uh, to to get to get better at doing what they do. So it's really exciting. And I wanted to bring Alex here to do like a mini POL, a mini presentation of learning a little bit on what he's been doing there and what he sees as the opportunity for technology for the greater good. And so that's what this is about. We're going to do a quick five-minute POL, if you will, with Alex, who's going to talk about that. Then we're going to do some question and answer. And then we're actually going to do some real-time pitching, if you will. Alex is, you know, as an expert, Alex has heard a ton of pitches. He's open to hearing your pitch or, or giving you feedback and maybe a question you've got around your work in entrepreneurship as well. And then uh, we'll close with some plugs. Meaning, you know, Alex is going to definitely plug the incubator that they're starting up again and the accelerator uh, they're doing work. And uh, and yeah, and we'll be done in about 30 to 40 minutes. No harm, no foul, right? Sounds good. So I uh, also want to welcome, we just had Travis Raymond just join us. Uh, welcome, Travis. He's a Public Alice Chicago alumnus from the class of 1995. Uh, so he's one of those old school dinosaurs, like, <laughs> uh, and he's he's the executive director at the Golden Foundation, uh, Golden Institute, which does some awesome international development. Work, so oh, he's, cool. he's awesome people. So uh, welcome, Travis. Good to see you, man, on the call. Awesome. So Alex, I'm going to turn it back over to you for two minutes. So also in real time, if you're tweeting, hashtag PA alum or hashtag Civic Startup. Uh, if you want other people to see it, and if you have questions in real time, you can hit the chat. Or if you're watching us out in YouTubeville. Use those uh, hashtags so we can find it on Twitter and we can get your questions down. Alex, hi. Great. Hey, Mac. Thanks for the great introduction. Uh, and hello, uh, PA alums uh, from around the country, maybe the world. Um, it's uh, Again, it's a real pleasure to uh, get connected to you all and uh, share um, conversation with you uh, around uh, public service and innovation. Um, before I get started uh, on showing you just a quick deck um, around our programs and some of my learnings and in relation to things you might be thinking about uh, around social entrepreneurship, 
Um, I'll just kind of uh, add on to uh, what uh, Mac was saying uh, around Code for America. Um, our mission is truly to help uh, government be by the people, uh, for the people in the 21st century. And to, uh, to us, what that means is um, to be using the best of uh, web technology um, to help citizens uh, connect and receive um, government services and to work in conjunction with government uh, to better their communities um, with the power of the web. Um, and so uh, under that mission lies uh, our accelerator program. Um, for those of you who are uh, not familiar with the format of uh, a startup accelerator, uh, what it is 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 it's a um, a type of program that takes promising uh, uh, startup companies and mentors them, nurtures them, provides them funding and connections uh, that will uh, support and bolster their success going into uh, their future. Um, and so, uh, Code for Americas is is very specific and special. Um, to uh, kind of the social impact space in that it exclusively uh, focuses on government and um, and it's a, a four-month program um, that helps um, civic startups as, as we term them. So I'm going to attempt to make a, a screen share work um, and uh, we will uh, make Hopefully that'll work out. Whoa, that's exciting. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to show you, go really quick through this slide deck. Um, can I just get a shout out from somebody that they can see this? I can see uh, the screen share for Hangouts uh, page. Now I see it. OK, great. Uh, so yes, yeah, so the Code for America Accelerator, just really quick, what it is. Um, as I shared, it's a mentorship and funding and um, support outfit uh, for civic startups with the aim of growing the ecosystem of these types of startups. Uh, what we believe is that we need change agents uh, both within government, among government officials, and uh, as well as activists around government and startups outside government that uh, can provide the services that, uh, that folks uh, need on a sustainable basis. I apologize for the uh, fire uh, noises that you may have seen behind me. Uh, um, and just to add some more imperative uh, sense around this, um, it's not irregular for government to procure meaning buy a website from a consulting firm for up to $140 million. This is not an irregular thing. And one of our fellows or startups can spin up similar websites or apps for maybe $15 on an afternoon or weekend. And so there's a really big um, separation between what technology can now provide and what government services can now um, be delivered because there's a lot of bureaucracy in the way. So I'm just going to keep on going through here. Um, mm -hmm. The program um, provides a lot of support um, to our companies. Uh, last year we had seven, many applications, many mentorship hours, a lot of support to them in terms of getting their names out there. Um, and coverage in, in major um, news outlets. Um, these are the companies that we had. Um, I'm happy to share more in-depth information for anyone who's interested after uh, the Hangout uh, and those of you who are in YouTube space. Uh, but we had folks, everyone from AuntBertha.com who allowed uh, folks to more easily uh, um, share their information and apply to all their health and human services, like welfare and food stamps, all in one fell swoop, um, which is usually really hard because you have to usually fill out many different applications 
uh, which are really difficult to understand sometimes, um, to uh, a company um, that actually is here with us at CFAHQ, um, recovers.org, which does disaster management uh, uh, organization powered by the community. So they uh, connect um, citizens together to share volunteer resources, food, blankets, you name it, and it's all in the service of connecting community prior to any federal agencies even getting there because FEMA gets there four days after the disaster and you know that grandma needs <laughs> her vitamins and her food and her support that she needs now. Um, so we have a lot of really great startups providing critical services um, to government um, and we we're really excited about this inaugural class. Um, I would love for you all to spread the word. Uh, in, in this instance, I'm going to tr transition a little bit to POL mode and talk to you all uh, just a bit about what I've learned going through this process. Um, I'm like a lot of you. I came out of college really interested in giving back to my community and uh, finding ways to deliver service. Um, that were innovative and also respectful to uh, the communities that I was working in. And what I like about Code for America is it thinks about that type of service um, in the mode of uh, the democracy that we live in um, and thinks very out of the box about the sectors that need to get involved uh, to foment uh, that change that we want to see both within ourselves, in our communities, in our government. And so I think it's really important for all of you all who are interested in social entrepreneurship, social enterprise, civic startups, social ventures, whatever terminology uh, you ascribe to, um, I think it's really important to think about all the players in your ecosystem and how are they all best uh, collaborating to uh, push forward the change that you want to see because I think that um, if we had done our work and thought forgot about um, for-profit entities, forgot about startups, uh, you know, forgot about other nonprofits and foundations in our space, we would have been much weaker um, in our mission and instead we've grown tremendously in the past three years that we've been around uh, and have inspired everything from an innovation fellowship in uh, San Francisco to the Presidential Innovation Fellows in the White House um, under uh, Todd Park, the CTO of the United States of America. So I think um, there's really great things coming ahead and I also just want to challenge folks to think about how uh, they can partner and or leverage their personal um, technology talents to forward whatever mission um, they're passionate about. Um, so at this point I will uh, uh, transition to listening mode because I'm really excited to hear uh, uh, less from me and more um, about uh, your ideas. So I'm going to uh, exit from this presentation and uh, end this uh, screen share um, and so you can see me again. All right. Thanks so much, Alex, for that. Um, totally. Before we get there, I have one follow-up question for you, Alex, and then I yeah. want to open it up for the group in terms of questions or pitches. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Can you speak? I, we had a conversation in San Francisco a few months ago, and I really, mm -hmm. I really, I found it really uh, profound point you made about mm -hmm. Uh, you, you talk about how some people get left out of thinking about building community. Uh, and and uh, you sort of spoke to the design folks or people that think in this way. Could you sort of speak to this sort of how some, you know, or like how you've seen Code for America engage people into this work that might normally, normally not do this work? We have, uh, so I've talked with you just about the accelerator program under Code for America. But we actually have many different branches. Um, of programs, uh, 
uh, uh, within Code for America, and so I'm just going to actually. It's uh, our community organizing outfit, um, and if there is one in uh, in your city, um, please feel excited and welcome to join. Um, what they are are uh, community organized uh, civic technology groups, and what they do is they um, work in cities all across the United States to replicate and, and push forward applications and uh, data that they think that the city uh, can use. Um, an example is uh, uh, our Anchorage Brigade um, adopted um, a, an app called Adopt-A-Hydrant for um, fire hydrants so that citizens could adopt a fire hydrant, kind of like you adopt a dog, and they're able to like shovel out the hydrants um, so that it doesn't take um, hours for the uh, fire folks to get there and dig out the hydrant um, and uh, cost the city and citizens uh, thousands of dollars of uh, those firefighters time to loosen up those hydrants. Um, and so this is just an example of how citizens um, deploying and engaging um, with governments through apps like these can really make a difference in their communities. Um, and that just really engages a really broad span of people because um, we organize uh, these brigades all across the country. Um, we are super emphatic about um, having everyone of all types of skill levels join, um, really pro women in terms of involvement at um, at all of our events. Um, we throw a, a hackathon actually called the National Day of Civic Hacking. Um, for any of you not not familiar with the hackathon, uh, it's an event where you can jam out and. Uh, work on designing and talking about ideas you have for uh, making some type of uh, a project at the end. And in this case, for us, it's, it's technology, but it can also be design. It can be written word. Um, and we, you know, recruit far and wide, and it's a national movement. Um, so that's kind of our broad-based platform for anyone to get involved in. I, I really invite all of you to participate if if uh, if there's an event going on in your city, and I can share details about that as well. Um, so yeah. Let's put it out here for the network. If you're in the room and you've got a question for Alex, we'd love for you to either, if you have a question about his work or the work that you're seeing in the field of the intersection between government and uh, innovation, I'm sure you'd be happy to field it. Or you got your own, like you got kind of you want you want to do a dear dear Alex question about your own entrepreneurship stuff. He's welcome to hear that too. If you'd like to speak up, um, I don't know if everybody's mic'd, but if you're not mic, chat that like you know I'd like to have I'd like to have a comment, and then I'll I'll pe I'll uh, be sure to call on you. I'm still figuring out how to do this technology thing, but uh, awesome. So who do you if you have a question for Alex, please uh, let us know by typing in the chat box or uh, by speaking up, because I think you're all mic'd, or if not, you might have unmiked yourself. Yes. Uh, so put that out there, and uh, we'll do this here. Hey, I've got a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so, Alex, can you tell me a little bit more about how you came to, you said you had 235 applications, which then moved into seven organizations that you moved forward with. Uh -huh. What were some of the preferences or priorities in those applications that you saw strong indicators that they were going to be successful? Awesome. Thanks, RJ in Connecticut. Uh, yeah, how do you move from 235 to seven? Is that, I guess that's like <laughs> that. Which, which, uh, which uh, RJ is working on right now with all the applicants they're getting to public. Connecticut. You know, how they oh, move nice. Right? So what, what, nice. What, what's your insights on how do you get to that seven? Totally. Uh, congrats, RJ, to all the uh, interests. Uh, you know, 
for our process, um, and maybe this is applicable to others interested in this in this space. Um, you know, obviously alignment with our mission is is super critical, and in our case, it's um, uh, you know a, a, a drive and desire to serve uh, the public sector, uh, and in our case, meaning government, and how that's exhibited. Um, by, for example, the teams that we had last year was uh, folks um, came with planning backgrounds and had been working in government prior. People had seen um, amazing effects of their technology in uh, underserved communities in Nigeria, in health clinics, um, and they really wanted to bring that technology to a place that they knew could make a big difference. And so in their applications, you know, we were really looking for um, an understanding that they were dedicated truly uh, to the government space. Uh, and we asked questions of them um, in terms of, hey, you know, what, what traction have you had already with, with, government, uh, with government folks? Like, have you, have you sold to any um, uh, government partners yet? Have you done any betas with um, with uh, government uh, agencies yet? Uh, and that's just important because we, we really want um, people in our accelerator who are in line with our mission and our values, um, which also, since we're very product-driven here, um, uh, we have a lot of um, you know, pride and and energy around creating applications and products that are beautiful, easy, and elegant to use, um, and uh, that's that's really core to um, how we work here at Code for America because we really believe that if you're going to have accessible and uh, amazing services for your community then you have to be able to um, make things just really um, facilitated and easy to get through um, in terms of a service. And, and tangibly what this means is, uh, you know, you understand this really intuitively from your iPhone or smartphone. Like, you really easily can use your mail app, your Twitter app, um, or whatever on your cell phone because a designer and the technologist and the product manager who is working on that application thought really carefully about how they could facilitate you through the process of using their application. And right now, we really think of that process within uh, a consumer space, you know, like a space of, of buying things, um, you know, just like we like go through the mall and buy physical products. But we believe here at Code for America that that thinking needs to be brought into the public sector and into the 21st century uh, because we all uh, work on government, right? We are all uh, part and parcel of government. And uh, Tim O'Reilly, a big visionary in our space, um, says that, you know, government is what we do together that we can't do alone. And, you know, that's a really powerful statement and, and the things that we all do together should be, should be facilitated and supported in the most amazing and beautiful and easy to use ways. And right now, the easiest and most elegant ways to do many things from applying for your driver's license to having um, a piece of junk removed from your sidewalk, to applying for your uh, food stamps, which, hey, you know, public allies, you know, I've been there. Um, you know, you need, you need, to, you need to be there uh, with your technology, meeting people where they're at, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, public allies talks about meeting the community where they're at, and where people are at, especially young people, they are on all the different facets of technology. And so a lot of the work that we espouse will be driven by, right, like generational change, but we can't wait for that to happen. 
for the true transformation of of the public sector to happen. So that's that's why we exist. And and that was a really long winded answer to your <laughs> simple simple question. But uh, but uh, thank you, RJ, uh, for that. Um, we got three more questions in the queue, Alex. I want to get to. Uh, Burrell awesome. in Chicago wanted to know uh, what is the coolest project you've seen and. Uh, you know, and I, probably the ones you funded are supported are really cool. So maybe can you can you cite a project that's like super promising but just missed the cut? Oh, um, well, there's a there's some. I can't really talk about the uh, oh, companies right. that were rejected just right. to uh, protect, just sure. to respect their their privacy. Right. Uh, but um, there's a really cool project. Out there right now, and is put out by uh, the Department of Better Technology, um, and they're they're friends of ours. And uh, I just put their link up into the chat. And what they're doing is a really um, cool and simple technology um, called uh, Procurio. And what that does is allow you to, um, as a government official receive applications um, from companies and for you to have people star and sort them by what's best. Um, so if any of you have ever voted on American <laughs> Idol via texting or <laughs> any type of thing like that, that's basically it, right? It's like everyone working as a crowd and crowdsourcing within like a government agency to sort and to rate, like who's who's gonna like make the cut, right? Mm -hmm. And instead of like singers, it's for it's for uh, companies that should contract with government. And this is a huge, huge, huge problem that government deals with uh, because government wants to be fair, um, but it also uh, you know the process is sometimes too rigorous and too. <laughs> Uh, lengthy, going to like years sometimes, um, leaving companies high and dry and not able to allow them to sell their services um, because you know business works like in in uh, cycles of you know closing contracts within weeks, you know, and sometimes government will work in months, quarters, and years, and that's a really big mismatch. Um, mm -hmm. Awesome. So yeah, yeah. Um, cool. I'm seeing I'm seeing other questions. Uh, yeah, I want to give to Travis. Travis got a question, and then we'll go to Marco after that. Travis wanted to know: Is there an international version of code? Um, and uh, also, the second question to that is: Where does the funding come? Are they coming from the cities who sign on with you guys, or mm -hmm. or how does how does that work? Like how how do totally. you guys how do you guys resource that? Totally. I'll take uh, the first question and then the second. Uh, so, uh, in terms of interna international efforts, we actually just launched uh, Code for All. Um, we're very, very inspired by our friends over at Teach for America and Teach for All. Uh, and so, we, um, under uh, my colleague Catherine Bracey, have uh, launched a an outfit to um, share and replicate our learnings to uh, countries across um, the United States. Uh, no, sorry. Whoops. No, <laughs> countries around the world. Sorry, they can't all fit in the United States. That would be really <laughs> awful. Uh, uh, countries around around the world, um, and will be um, in Latin America, Europe, um, and, and more. So. We're in Africa, actually, and so we are super, super excited um, to share our learnings with the world, um, while at the same time uh, maintaining a balance and uh, you know maintaining values of cultural respect and integrity. Um, you know, we're very conscious of not um, of of being aware and and not having um, any type of, of <laughs> Cultural imperialism, um, and just making sure that you know we're able to offer um, uh, you know our our values around open data, um, collaboration, 
uh, developing applications for uh, an open source for the common good um, and for those uh, folks who resonate with those values um, we partner with uh, those countries governments and local foundations and um, help them develop whatever pieces of our programs they want to replicate mm -hmm. um, yeah great uh, and, and do you have anything quick Travis, oh the for second Paula. question yeah, yeah, yes, totally. So, uh, totally. So, Travis, um, uh, super uh, excited for you to come hang out with us today. Um, uh, we'd love to uh, maybe connect um, offline sometime and maybe connect you with Catherine as well. Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of our funding, it comes from uh, major foundation funders um, such as uh, the Kapoor's, um, Omidyar, uh, Kauffman Foundation, Knight Foundation, um, as well as uh, corporate sponsors such as Google for Entrepreneurs and Google.org, um, as well as uh, small and, and local um, individual donors. Um, for our fellowship, it is partially funded by the cities. Um, cities pay for our fellows, um, and then foundations supplement uh, that funding um, as a match and so um, that you know from a programmatic side really helps because when our fellows go into uh, their cities they have an ecosystem of support that includes uh, both the nonprofit sector and the government sector and uh, local technologists and designers uh, who want to help. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Um, I still on? Sorry, did you go? Um, Alex, we got about fifteen minutes left okay. on the call, and I want to make sure we get to this one. If you have other, we got time for a few more questions, so put them in the uh, group chat to let me know you want to ask a question, or if you got a question for Alex. Um, Marco in Arizona wants to know what is the average education experience levels of our accepted applicants? Can you sort of speak to? What's the makeup or the demographic makeup? Totally. So um, just because we were rolling up into, into my program um, and I didn't get to give the overlay of all the programs at Code for America, let me just roll back to that really quick. So I described to you all our community organizing outfit, the Brigade, um, our international program, um, and our accelerator. Uh, you know, our flagship program is, is our fellowship program. Um, which I am actually uh, uh, newly managing as of uh, yesterday. Congratulations. <laughs> the promo is that promotion? Is yes. That, or, or is yes. That, yes. Or is that so, other duties as assigned? Is that other uh, duties as assigned? It, it's, it's a promotion. It's, <laughs> it's other duties too. It's, uh, yeah, no, but it's awesome. I, I love our fellows, so I'm very excited. Uh, nice. Thank you. Uh, so, um, so our... Our fellowship program is kind of our flagship program and it's our oldest and what it does is it places developers and designers who care about um, the public sector and the public good into city government to build applications and uh, projects that um, help government work more effectively and transparently um, for citizens. And um, in terms of their average educational um, uh, uh, level or their vocations, um, our fellows come from all types of educational backgrounds. Um, I've actually uh, coordinated and connected with um, <laughs> uh, some folks at the Points of Light Institute and AmeriCorps alums because we actually have had and pro I assume will have AmeriCorps alums in our programs, in, in our fellowship. Um, again, because there's a lot of uh, design and tech and project management talent uh, among public allies and AmeriCorps alums. Um, and, uh, you know, in terms of education, we've had everyone from um, uh, dropping out of college to, uh, you know, having a, a PhD um, in anthropology uh, join our programs. Um, and age range, everyone from uh, 19 to, uh, I believe, 45. 
Um, so we have a really broad and uh, um, diverse span in terms of people's experience. Um, okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, great. Um, yeah, and uh, do you see this question from Eve? Uh, she wants to know what are best practices for reaching out to communities with less internet access, mm -hmm. or perhaps their mobile users. Maybe that's their main uh, sense. As, as, I mean, what have you learned through code of, of trying to bridge that divide? Totally, totally. So actually, one of our um, fellowship projects in Philadelphia did this uh, uh, address digital inclusion uh, um, I think very well uh, they um, had a t they were tasked by the city to engage with um, citizen feedback to government uh, and uh, the uh, team um, did a lot of research a lot of user research into the neighborhoods of urban Philadelphia and what they realized was a lot of the population, um, often you know, populations of color um, and uh, the inner urban uh, uh, poor, um, did not have access to devices with uh, with web access. And um, what that means is, um, you know, no smartphones, no tablets, no desktops. Um, and so the best way to um, connect with folks uh, at that level of um, accessibility was to utilize texting because um, there, there were uh, really great um, penetration of cell phones but not a great penetration of smartphones in a lot of these communities. So I'm share with you all uh, the link so you can get an, ex uh, an understanding of like the type of um, apps that come out of Code for America's fellowship and actually can go on and become a company like Texasin did. Um, so Texasin was the resultant app out of Philadelphia um, and they um, put up posters and signs all over Philadelphia with a number and you could text that number to provide feedback about, oh, like, what do you guys think about this bus rapid transit service? Oh, like, do you guys think that government is doing enough to provide, um, you know, uh, cleaning services uh, on our highways? Um, and that really allowed, um, in the way that is really resonant with Code for America's values, to gain a lot more quality feedback from citizens and to be actionable on that feedback um, without having to host uh, town halls where process and bureaucracy oftentimes, not all the times, but oftentimes doesn't allow for everyone's uh, feedback to be heard and to be um, acted upon. Um, so in this way, government was getting uh, feedback from thousands of people People who, you know, were sitting in bus stations and in public areas, people of color, pe women, everyone, and were able to do it at a scale heretofore um, not as, um, as accessed by government in Philadelphia uh, or um, not uh, as accessible without major resources being spent to go door to door to get this information. Um, so Texasin is a really great example of how Code for America um, thinks and, and, and pushes fellows to think about digital inclusion in the work they're doing in community. Great. You know, Alice, we got one more great question here from the room. Brett Hudson, who's joined us in the middle. So welcome, Brett. Uh, great to e-meet you. I don't think I've ever engaged you, so it's so great to have you join us today. Uh, great question. Uh, it's a heavy one. How, he's talking about traction. And what do you what do you think of the lack? You can read it in the, there. What do you think the lack of traction is due to? Is it is it the products themselves? Uh, is it the sort of design of how they work, or is it demand itself? What what do you say? You know, again, you, you see a lot of these projects probably struggle or, or challenge. What have you found to be uh, trends that suggest that? Um, so I uh, 
uh, I'll try to answer your question uh, as best as I can. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, there are many reasons why companies don't make traction um, in in the populations that they're trying to serve. Uh, um, you know, so this is this is the main problem that we're trying to overcome here at Code for America is that um, it's often hard for governments to make uh, or or startups to make traction with government because buying buying um, startup technology is really hard for a lot of governments. Um, and to give you like an analogy, it's kind of like you, if you all try to go to buy like a pack of gum at a store, and the store owner, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> You know, like you, ha you had to like um, give the store owner an application to allow them to sell you the pack of gum, and you made them like do it on a piece of paper, and you know you waited really a long time for your piece of gum, and so um, traction is is hard when there's a really bureaucratic process for startups to sell to government. Um, and like I said before, you know, I and and many people, you know, really respect that government has to hold fair processes um, for people to approach them around selling um, uh, their products because, you know, it, 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 there's always potentials for corruption. Um, but that's that's a big issue in terms of just the. Um, Client side equation for any company uh, design uh, uh, um, knowing your user, doing your sufficient user research um, is always, always, always critical pieces of understanding where your market is and whether you're going to have traction. And um, this is something you know for myself, like coming from a, a more activist space and a more um, nonprofit, um, uh, just learning space, I, you know, inherently thought about markets, but I didn't always think about them or the thinking around mar markets as a strategy for making change in my community. So I would challenge folks um, who are interested in um, in doing their work, and I know I've talked with Eve uh, Tolbert, who I think joined this call, um, about her social enterprise ideas, and I really, really um, hammer on this on this topic um, about you know really doing your due diligence about your users or your community members. Like, what are their needs? What are their true needs? What are they? What do they need that they're telling you? What do they need that they're not telling you? And really, um, you know, tailor and, and develop your uh, product and or services to meet those needs where where those folks are at. Um, so yeah, so I, I think um, all those places that you asked in your question do impact traction. Um, and for us, it's on both on the government side and on the onus of the enterprise itself to really do it, its its homework. Right on. Uh, you know, I want to just acknowledge we're at the uh, we're at the uh, sort of at the end of our time of our Google Hangout. Uh, and before we wrap up, I just want to want to once again thank you all for joining us for our pilot episode of the the Google Hangout here for about the community innovator. So exciting to see some familiar faces and some new faces. Uh, and to let you know, uh, I really appreciate Alex, who's been part of this thought process since last year in emails. It's so great to have you uh, part of this process continue to share your giftedness and your networks and uh, and can we, you're going to share the PowerPoint we're going to post that out later at our uh, at our community innovators page and hopefully that they, they could be uh, follow up with you because it sounds like there's some real interest just totally. learning more about the, the, the work that you do yeah. um, and also just letting you all know uh, again this summer one of our goals is is to have twice as many people that did our uh, boot camp last year um, and one of the cool things that Alex talked about is we, we brought in folks like Alex to help hone do some personal coaching uh, about it. So uh, that so if you like Alex, uh, stick around with us this summer and join us for these. Uh, we're going to do some webinars with Echoing Green to help hone your own ideas 
for your own entrepreneurship or intrapreneurship. And uh, you'll have folks like Alex. Uh, we also had uh, Recovers.org, uh, the CEO, Katrio O'Neill. That's one of the, the companies that uh, Alex supported. We brought her in to help coach some folks. Uh, so we, we bring some really cool super friends from around the field uh, that are public allies on the not. But in the meantime, thanks so much for everybody for hanging out with us today. Uh, if you liked it, email me that you or, or post that you liked it. If you think it could be even better, if dot dot dot, let us know. Uh, otherwise, thanks so much for joining us uh, today. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, uh, we hope that you join us over at our Google Plus page. And stay tuned. In two weeks, uh, we're going to have Eve Talbert. Here's our plug for the next one: uh, how to le how to really do participant inclusion uh, in every level of your enterprise. Uh, and so she's really talking about some really elegant arts-inspired methods and, and technologies to really engage the participant, the client, in the design of every level. Uh, and so I'm really excited about this, how to, how to embed this inclusion value into her entrepreneurship work. He's going to talk about how she's done that with Freedom Games and how they're going to partner with the Chicago Public Schools this summer to, oh, to bring in uh, 600 young people uh, into the game design, toy crafting uh, concept. So, so that's what's coming up later. Until then, thanks everybody for being there. Thanks for everybody out there on YouTube, Bill. Uh, and uh, see you over at the Google page. Bye.